Welcome back to Practical Stoicism. I'm your host, Tanner Campbell. I hope you're doing well. Remember, if you hate ads, and oh boy, I know you must, I hate them, you can get rid of them for just $6 a month by becoming a premium supporter of this podcast. I would certainly appreciate it, and it comes with a couple of extras you can learn more about over at stoicism.supercast.com. You can find that link in the show notes of this episode, and every episode. Today we're going over Meditation 18 from Book 4, which reads as follows. Do not act as if thou wert going to live ten thousand years. Death hangs over thee. While thou livest, while it is in thy power, be good. Never missing an opportunity to remind us of our mortality, Marcus is at it again. You're going to die, and it's not as if it's guaranteed to happen when you're ninety years old and tired of living. It might instead happen today, or tomorrow, or right now, and you had better act every day with that in mind, or you're going to find yourself dying with significant regrets. On this podcast, and no doubt on others, you have heard the Latin memento mori, or remember you must die. Why do you think you're remembering this? It's not to be the most goth kid on your block, it's to keep yourself focused on the work you're trying to accomplish, the changes you're attempting to bring about in the world, the mortality of your friends and loved ones, the unknown limit placed upon your consciousness, etc. We say memento mori, and some of us even carry coins that say this or get tattoos that say it. I don't, but some do, in order to remind us to constantly assess the way we're spending our time and to ask of ourselves whether or not this investment of our time, whatever it is when we ask ourselves this question, is the best use of what little time we have. Now, that doesn't mean you can't muck around sometimes. It doesn't mean you can't have a lazy Sunday or do nothing for a while while you're on vacation. It doesn't mean you have to be all business all the time and have no fun. All it means is pay attention to the fact that you don't know when you're going to die and assess your current activities appropriately. Are you okay with spending some of this time out with friends having a few drinks? There's no right or wrong answer. There's just how you feel about it. And this isn't reverse psychology. I'm honestly telling you that wasting time is okay so long as you understand you're spending some of your mortality as you do so. I waste time every Friday night when Netflix releases a new episode of The Great British Bake Off. I'm actually a little bit bummed out because this Friday, I think, is the last episode. I get to find out who wins, which is exciting, but it's also sad because I can't watch them anymore. I have to wait a whole other year. And every Saturday and Sunday that I decide to spend reading old Calvin and Hobbes comics, I waste time then, too. And while I'm doing those things, if I'm doing those things, I'm having an inner conversation with myself. Is this how I want to spend these moments? Am I okay knowing I won't get them back? Is this an expenditure of life hours that I am okay with? If the answer is yes, I keep at it. If it's not, I stop. But asking myself these questions are a good opportunity to make sure that I'm not wasting my time or not wasting my time in a way that I would rather not be. Of course, you can't answer yes all the time to the question, is this an investment of life hours that I'm happy with? That's just being dishonest with yourself, at least from the perspective of stoicism. I couldn't claim to be particularly stoic if I spent all my time reading Calvin and Hobbes comics instead of participating in my community or helping to improve the world as I saw necessary, or standing up to injustices where and when I could. We can't waste all our time, but we're certainly allowed to be okay with wasting some of our time. And there's a feature of what I call dude bro stoicism that I think contends with my notions here and is flatly wrong, and maybe it's worth talking about it now. Dude bro stoicism, the sort you see from many masculinity influencers, is a very black and white, zero one, on off misconception of stoicism. These individuals frequently mistake stoic with a capital S with stoic with a lowercase s. I, in fact, saw one such video from an influencer today, a guy named Andrew Tate, an individual who I personally believe has done untold damage to numerous young men with his platform of go your own way, so called red pill masculinity. In this video, he said, emotion made you unstoic. The example he gave was women, 
and I'm not surprised based on other content I've seen of his that he targeted women and not men, because men certainly do this same thing. The example he gave was women screaming and freaking out at concerts. He said these people have, quote, no stoicism. Now, this might come as a shock to some of you. It would certainly come as a shock to Andrew Tate, but there isn't a specific way to be stoic. When you're stoic with a capital S, people identify you as being stoic. It's sort of an essence of personality more than it is a configuration of specific ingredients or a checklist of specific steps. Yes, cardinal virtues of bravery, justice, temperance, and wisdom must show through. They must be made manifest by your behavior. But is someone broadly intemperate if they get excited at a concert? Is someone broadly not brave if they get scared? Is someone broadly unjust if they're unkind to someone on an occasion or two? Is someone unwise broadly if they make a stupid mistake? The answer is no. You can make mistakes. You can occasionally be unkind. You can occasionally be afraid. You can occasionally get overexcited. These things don't make you unstoic broadly. They may make you unstoic kind of in the moment, but that doesn't mean you're not a stoic person. Dude bro stoicism is rooted in what is the poorest understanding of stoicism I'm aware of, and then declares that one must be 100% that version of stoic, 100% of the time. And if there's a crack in that armor, you're weak. You're not a stoic, because to these people, a stoic is a sage. But what do we know after more than 50 episodes of this podcast about sages in stoicism? What are we absolutely sure of? What's something I've made sure you understand on numerous occasions? That there are no sages in Stoicism. There is no enlightened Buddha figure, no visage of perfection in this philosophy. And if there were, do you believe that Andrew Tate or guys like him who make a big deal about having money, private jets, and beautiful women on their arms, do you think that these sorts of men are those sages? Do you think they're even good teachers? I hope not. I hope I've done a better job than that up to this point on this podcast. You don't need to be perfect. You can take a day off from strictly stoic activities and still maintain your virtue and still maintain your stoic practice. So when you're practicing memento mori, don't treat it like this parental edict wagging its finger at you, shaming you for not being 100% dedicated to utility 100% of the time, because that is not what stoicism is. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Practical Stoicism. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't yet, consider leaving this podcast a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, or Podchaser.com, or wherever it is you can leave a review where you listen to this podcast. Also, if you want to get rid of ads, check the show notes for a link to stoicism.supercast.com and get rid of those ads. Thanks again for listening, and until next time, take care. Take care.